If you have pretty good basic math skills, well, you should be able to solve this problem without using a calculator. Let's take a look at the question. So a train goes 12 miles in 18 minutes. How fast is the train going in miles per hour? All right, so once again, no calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna walk through the complete solution steps in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we're gonna do this without a calculator. So we have a train that goes 12 miles in 18 minutes. How fast is this train going in miles per hour? All right, so first things first, first we have a lovely uh, math uh, word problem. And you always wanna use the rule of three when you solve any math word problem. And that is read the problem at least three times. Now, this uh, particular problem is pretty straightforward, but you gotta be careful. Even with simple problems, you can, you know, oftentimes go too fast and then get confused, okay? You definitely don't wanna confuse the information. So, you know, read the problem more than once. And then what you wanna do is try to model this situation. So we have this train, it covers 12 miles in 18 minutes. So how fast is the train going? Now, a good idea to um, solve any problem is just to kind of model the situation. Oftentimes, visualizing the problem can help you see the solution. So let's go ahead and take a look at a little sketch of the problem. So, uh, you know, this gives us a chance to use our basic art skills as well. So here is our train. It goes 12 miles in 18 minutes, and the question is, how fast is it going, i.e., what is the speed of the train? So let's think about this for a second. What do you think uh, should be our units of measure for the speed of the train? Okay, so should it be uh, maybe meters per second, or maybe uh, kilometers per hour? or maybe like uh, miles per hour, right? Maybe that probably sounds pretty good. Now, of course, if you are in a, a non-US country where, there, where you use the metric system, you might uh, prefer something like a kilometer per hour or some other units of measure, but we are dealing with miles, so we're definitely not in the metric system, and we are dealing with minutes. So we probably want to have the speed of this train expressed in terms of miles per hour. And of course, you saw the solution is 40 miles per hour. So we need to keep this in mind. Units of measure are critical when solving any math problem, right? Especially, obviously, when you have, you know, area problems, volume problems, speed problems, doesn't make a difference. If there's units involved, you got to be very aware of this. But we can't solve this particular problem unless we can re uh, relate uh, distance time and speed. And I'm going to show you a uh, formula right now that this is uh, really one of these type of formulas that you need to store away in your long-term memory. Okay, so here it is. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and tell you what it uh, stands for. R times T is equal to D. So we're talking about rate times time is equal to distance. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint here. I'm gonna give you a chance to figure this thing out. So if you forgot the formula, well, here it is. Rate times time is equal to distance. And here is the problem. We just basically, you know, visualized it. So why don't you see if you can plug in this information to figure out the speed of the train. All right, so again, rate times time is equal to distance. Let's go ahead and take a look at the setup. Okay, so what do you think? Rate times time is equal to distance. So we're looking for the what? Well, rate is another word for speed. Another word also that comes into mind or comes to mind is velocity, right? So like velocity, speed, you know, rate, okay? These are all, you know, well, there's technical differences, you know, for those of you that understand vectors and whatnot, but we don't need to get overly complex. But if we're talking about the speed of something, we are talking about the rate. Okay, so the rate, is what we're looking for, right? We're looking for the speed of the train. Now we do have the time of the train, okay, and the distance. So this uh, train covered 12 miles in 18 minutes. So what do you think? You think this is a pretty good setup? Well, uh, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Now, if it's good, 
uh, tell me why it's good. If it's bad, tell me why it's bad. Now, if you said, hey, Mr. YouTube, Math Man, this is not good, well, you would be absolutely correct. Matter of fact, i got to give you another happy face and another little bonus A+. Plus. This is wrong because our time, okay, is in minutes. Now, it's not technically wrong uh, to do this, but we want to express our rate in terms of miles per hour. So this is not a good approach to do this, okay? So uh, if you use this approach, well, then you're going to give, you're going to end up with a different unit of measure. So when you have a problem, oftentimes the problem will say express your answer in you know, a particular unit of measure, but try to use the most logical unit of measure. Of course, the speed of this train should be like in miles per hour. But uh, this is an incorrect setup because here we are dealing with minutes, okay? We need hours, not minutes. So let's go back real quick and review the setup for rate times times equal to distance. So in any particular um, unit of measure, okay, it could be meters per second. Well, matter of fact, let's take that real quick. Meters per second. Okay, so this is a speed. So the distance is in meters. So here, if we had a problem, we would have to make sure that this unit of measure is in meters and this, uh, our time would have to be in seconds, then our rate would be in meters per second, okay? So let's uh, kind of review this in terms of miles per hour, okay? So we have miles. Now we have uh, MPH, miles per hour, but really you can think of that as this, miles per hour, okay? So our distance is what? Miles, so our time needs to be in hours and our rate, our speed will be in miles per hour. So what we need to do, uh, what we need to do here is convert those 18 minutes into hours. So how do we do that? Well, pretty straightforward. Now a lot of you could probably say, well, you just take 18 divided by 60 minutes, 18 minutes divided by 60 minutes. You would, you would be correct, but really technically what's going on is you're multiplying this time by a conversion factor. So we have one hour to 60 minutes. Okay. Also 60 minutes to one. Uh, hour, but you got to make sure you use the correct conversion factor, okay? Because when you multiply across here, 18 minutes times one hour over 60 minutes, the units of measure of um, minutes cross cancel, and we're left with hours. Okay, so I'm covering a lot of things here that some of you might be, you know, struggling with. If you need help with um, this level of mathematics, I'm going to give you some suggestions here in a second, okay? But hopefully you know how to convert. Units of measure, so that's why here, if you're confused, oh, I'm gonna use 60 minutes to one uh, hour, that would be incorrect because we'd have minutes times minutes or minutes squared. Gotta make sure that your, your uh, units of measure that you're trying to get rid of, i.e. here, we're trying to get rid of minutes to get to hours, so they have to cross cancel. All right, so we end up with 18 over 60, this lovely fraction. Of course, six goes into 18, three, and six goes into 60, 10, so, uh, 18 minutes is three tenths of an hour. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and plug this into our lovely formula. Rate times time is equal to distance. Uh, we're not going to use 18 minutes. We're going to use three tenths of an hour. Okay, so now we have our time an hour. Our distance is in miles. So when we solve for the rate, it will be in miles per hour. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. Okay, so this should be pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and take the next step and solve 3 tenths times r is equal to 12. Now, this might be a little bit confusing for you got r times 3 tenths is equal to 12. But, uh, you know, order and multiplication doesn't make a difference. So we can write the coefficient or the number like this. We have 3 tenths times r is equal to 12. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. We have 3. 3 tenths r is equal to 12. So to solve for r, all we need to do is multiply 
uh, both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. Okay, so this is the easiest way to solve uh, basic fraction equations. So if the coefficient is a fraction, the best way to solve these type of equations, again, is to flip this upside down. That's called the reciprocal. So we have 10 thirds times 3 tenths. So when we multiply these fractions, 10 times 3 is 30 over 3 times 10 is 30. 30 over 30 is 1, right? So 1 or 1 R or R. But if we multiply this side of the equation by uh, 10 thirds, remember the basic rule in algebra is you have to multiply the other side as well. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other. So we have 12 times 10 over 3. So 10 over 3 uh, times 12, 3 goes into 12, 4. 4 times uh, 10 is 40. So our rate is 40 miles per hour. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.